to say this and I got to go. I love y'all. Keep supporting comedy. And I want to thank each and every one of you black guys for dating these ugly ass white chicks and taking them off our hands. Real business. My name's Ray Lepowski. I'm out of here. All right, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. So let's get into today's topic. So today's topic comes from our one and only Denise. Shout out to you for sending this to me and for giving me my Sunday evening laugh because this shit was hilarious. So for today's topic, y'all, we got a little bit of a giggle. Um, a little bit of a shout out to Cynthia G, who they really choose video. Um, we have here a white dude by the name of Chandler David Smith. He has a YouTube page where he profiles his um, property ownership. So he owns, I think he said, about 60 different properties. He's a white dude. Um, he has a management company that manages the properties for him. And his YouTube page is geared towards teaching people how to basically profit from prop, profit from property ownership. So in this particular video, he profiles a full on eviction that has already gone through the court. The a judge has already said that the tenants got to go. And so he thought that it would be good to participate in that process just to see how things go down. He does have the management company to do all the dirty work for him. And so he decided that it would be good to, I guess, profile this particular circumstance and try to get an interview. Now, spoiler alert, the tenant that he is evicting is a naker in his Becky. So <laughs> this is so, it's so rich. So again, shout out to you, Denise, for sending this to me because this is great. So anyways, y'all, we're going to go ahead and react to this interview. Before we, do, we react to the interview, um, we're going to probably have a little bit of a, um, well, we're going to have some, we're going to have to go over the background information just so y'all understand the, you know, all the shit these two undesirables did together <laughs> up to the interview which profiles what occurred, you know, like their perspective of what occurred with the whole eviction process. So it's it's all great. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do um, some background information and react to that. Um, that way you guys understand what's really happening and just the full perspective of, of, of the um, landowner. And then I'm probably going to have to do a part two with the interview in itself. So like, comment, share, and subscribe. This is really, really good. We're going to go ahead and take the parts that um, I felt are most important as far as background information. And then in part two, we'll do the full interview and then final thoughts. So take a look at this first clip so that you guys can understand what it is this poor white man is dealing with. Check this out. All right, let's go see what happens. Well, first off, so I never do this stuff. Um, usually my management company takes care of everything, but we've got this tenant that has been a total pain in the butt, and I didn't really know about it until just recently because we're having to do a full eviction. And anytime we need to do a full eviction, that means that I have to go in and sign some papers because the owner has to sign them so that we can go through with the eviction. And so I started asking questions about what's going on and I guess this guy has been caught with drugs down in the basement. Um, we've had complaints upstairs of their like being straight up orgies in the basement. There have been tons of complaints from the tenants that aren't even ours that are next door that tons of crazy parties have happened and then that they're leaving crap out in the neighbor's yard. There have just been complaint after complaint. The frustrating thing is the first six All right. So y'all saw that. Um, you heard basically like this Naker and his Becky have done drugs. They've had full on orgies. They've had parties. They've had junk in the yard, in the neighbor's yard. Just, just, just making the place very dusty and a hot, vitreous ass mess. Um, so that's the background information. So one of the things that he notes that I kind of interrupted it, but he basically says that they started to pay 
at first for the like first few months they were great tenants and then all of a sudden they just like spiraled out of control to the point where they were able to manipulate the system and stay in the property while being shitty tenants and so um they finally went through the whole eviction process thousands of dollars i'm sure it cost this man to be able to get this dusty naker and his damn becky um out of the property and so <laughs> that's the background information so take a look at this next clip it's going to go further into depth as to what this this poor dude is dealing with this property owner and then we'll talk through the whole eviction we went through all the garbage and this tenant is having the cops show up to their place two days from now to get them out of the property so we told them look this is it you've got two days to go out peacefully or they know the cops are showing up the court case is closed it's all good to go and now we just need to get them out of the property so we went through this whole process with all of this different garbage and it's kind of been frustrating because obviously I've lost money and I've, well, for me, it hasn't been that frustrating because my management company has been taking care of it, but it's still frustrating that we haven't been getting paid. I haven't been acting as the landlord because I have a management company that has been dealing with them, dealing with the issues, talking to them, doing all that. So they don't really know me, but I'm hoping I can go and sell them on letting us go and sit down and get their side of the story and kind of just do an interview. So we're going to. All right. So basically, you know, things have escalated, you know, now that the court hearing is over with and the judge has made their ruling, get the hell out of the property. Yes. So. So now there's a little bit of a process thereafter right uh which in this case in a couple of days they're gonna have the cops come by to escort them the hell out of the property rightfully so so the tenants know the police are coming and and the process of eviction is complete and so now we're at a point where it is what it is, and he wants to go ahead and interview the couple. So, okay, so that's that. So, all right, so pay attention to this next clip because I think that this is important because he has given you some sort of high-level explanation as to what went down with the property as somebody who... Um, is the owner but doesn't really have to deal with it because he has has hired a, a management company he just now has to be a part of the process because it is like a full-on eviction and like there's some shit that he has to deal with in that regard so pay attention to this next clip <laughs> the next clip comes from the actual landlord which this guy hired to manage the property He's going to go ahead and give y'all a breakdown of what he had to deal with as the landlord. So check this out. Jace, in like uh, 60 seconds, can you give us a rundown of all of the crap, I guess, that you've had to deal with with these tenants over the last couple months? Tenants decide not to pay rent. That's my standard stuff. Um, and tell you, I'm just looking for my by the mall up the ceiling if you paint the whole bathroom. You get everything running perfectly. You get a brand new water heater put in. You fix the line in the laundry room because it's not venting right. And then they still don't pay rent. Um, then you have neighbors move out upstairs because of the noise and the orgy parties going on downstairs. And then you find out upstairs they've been in the house, they took us some food out, and they stole the water pipes from underneath the kitchen sink. Um, <laughs> I so forgot about that. For some reason, I don't know why, but someone stole all the pipes, and they are the ones that had the access to the door. Then their power gets shut off because of lack of payment on that side. So they bust the door in between the two apartments and plug their cord into the outlet inside the upstairs unit apartment. <laughs> I forgot they were stealing electricity, too. Yeah. Okay, we could press charges for burglary, so they are stealing power. Um, instead of making an ultimatum, so they won't press charges if you move out in the next seven days. 
then they possibly show up on their own because they keep suspicious activity and they find marijuana out there, take a bag, a giant bag full and a brown stack of marijuana and like, uh, all right, y'all. So, <laughs> this is the landlord's perspective of what went down. Like, just all the shit they're having to deal with. And mind you, an eviction process is not just like a hop, skip, and jump of getting motherfuckers out of your property. It is a whole process and it costs a lot of money. So, on top of having to deal with, because it sounds like he went above and beyond, right? Because they didn't pay, right? They started off with not paying. So, you know, they it, it, the landlord says that they cleaned the mold in the bathroom. They drained the sinks. They put a new water heater in. They fixed the line in the laundry room. And they still didn't pay. So it sounds like these were the grounds that these this, this naker and his Becky were using to not pay the rent. And it sounds like they went above and beyond to fix the issues. But yet they still didn't pay the rent and on top of everything else they're getting complaints of of noise and orgies and 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 stolen water pipes from the kitchen and stolen power from the neighbor and you know marijuana too which i'm libertarian as y'all know marijuana doesn't really like play a huge role for me in this particular case but to be honest with you i'm pretty sure it doesn't for most landowners they don't give a shit what you do in the property just don't like destroy my shit don't bring attention on yourself when you leave leave it the way you left it so that whatever cleaning I have to do it's not that big of a deal because cleaning just comes with the territory naturally I'm gonna clean my shit out because somebody has been living in it for a few years I'm gonna have to clean it so at the very least leave it the to your best ability the way you you found it, you know? So I'm pretty sure that marijuana doesn't play a huge factor in it. If you leave the place and you leave it as if you didn't smoke marijuana in the joint whatsoever. So that's a small factor in that. But they have all these other huge issues. (laughs) Like you're not paying your rent. I do the shit that you say that needs to go get done and you're still not paying your rent. But then on top of that, you're having orgies, you're doing drugs and you're doing all this other extra shit. And then you're still in power from people. Like, look, y'all, I don't know if y'all know, but stealing power from the utility company is a lot more big of a deal than y'all think. So (laughs) that's a big deal. But they were doing that shit too. And this is the deal that this this uh property manager um hit the the owner his property manager aka the landlord they have to deal with so basically they went in court they get a full eviction and he decides that it would be good to maybe get an interview out of these people to get their perspective long story short they agree um, but before we get into the interview, I want y'all, I want y'all to check this out because they do go on the property the first day. They weren't able to, um, get in touch with anybody because I don't think anybody was there. So they do go back the next day and that's when they are able to get agreement to do the interview. But on the first day, they decide to scope the area to see what they can see from the outside without going in. So go ahead and check this out because it basically profiles basically the hot mess that they de- they're dealing with just from the outside. So check this out. Off. You can see they're literally stealing electricity from the upstairs tenant and they've been complaining about it forever, but they just keep coming and plugging it back in. This is ridiculous. I want to see if there's someone we could get a hold of. Oh, dude. 
that's the worst thing when you have a property and it smells like a property that you're like, oh, I'm in the right place because I'm going to get a killer deal on this property because of how it smells. And now my property smells that way. So, ugh. So I think that was the other broken window. When I got here, they literally just had the water running. And then they've got all of this garbage back here. All of the windows have been broken by them. And in the eviction hearing, they were complaining about how we haven't come to fix the broken windows that they've broken while being on drugs in the process of going through not paying their rent. So it's like, come on. The other thing, we don't own these garages. They're owned by the tenant or the, an owner of a building over here. With all of this crap here, we got a super pissed off call from the owners there that came and uh, like complained. They found my information and called me up and they're like, hey, your property looks like crap. And we're like, well, it just is like this now because we literally are trying to get the tenants out and it's their garbage and supposedly they're moving. But I guess Jason said it's been like this for a while. All right, so, oops. Okay. So y'all saw that. Y'all heard that. We got just, 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 just the money being drained out of the bank behind this naker and this Becky. You know, his, his property now smells of the <laughs> smell that it usually smells when like people go and they go property, um, property shopping. You smell a smell in a property, you know you're going to get a discount. His his house now smells of that smell, he says. Um, he, he <laughs> They were complaining about the fact that they didn't quit. They didn't come to fix the broken windows that they broke in the court hearing. And then to top things off, they are now causing other property owners to be pissed off because they keep leaving their junk afoot, as you can see. And now other property owners are calling this property owner talking about, yo, your property looks a hot, atrocious ass mess and it's impacting my property. And he's having to explain to these people, yo, I'm trying, I'm trying my best. I'm trying to get these motherfuckers out of here. It's taking time going through the process. <laughs> and it looks like, according to the landlord, it's been this way for quite some time. So they're having to deal with this for quite some time. So this is basically what they were able to see um, before they were able to um, <laughs> seal the deal as far as getting them to interview. Now, um, let me go ahead and show you this final clip. It's just a, a couple of seconds. It cracks me up because it, it just shows how weak people are. Uh, somehow, some way, he was able to get them to agree to do the interview after all of this hot mess that we just witnessed and this, just this background information, this part one alone. <laughs> he still managed to finesse the, this naker and his his Becky to do the interview. So <laughs> look, take a look at this final clip and then we'll have some final talking points for this video, which should segment into part two, which is the actual interview with the naker and his Becky. All right, so he just agreed to do an interview. Um, I said kind of for training purposes, so we're gonna set up chairs and just ask him and see how this goes. And then I'm probably gonna get it heated up because I'm gonna go at him a little bit. So we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> do y'all see the evil eye in this white man's eye? It's like they just know the pathology, as Cynthia G says, shout out to Cynthia G. Like you could just like see in his eye, in his evil eye, he knows the pathology of the makers. I'm telling you, <laughs> it just 
It just tickles me. It tickles me because he is so excited. He knows that despite losing thousands, he is going to make thousands in return off of this interview alone because he was able to finesse this naker and his crackhead Becky into um, doing the interview. So (laughs) that's what's going to go down next. And it's so rich, y'all. It's so rich. So the next one's going to be a little bit longer. I know this one is a little bit long as well, but I hope y'all were able to like hang in there because this shit is just rich as shit. So stand by, like, comment, share, and subscribe. We're going to go ahead and uh, do a part two, which is the interview in itself. The interview is it's like about 20 minutes long. So the next video is going to be pretty long. We're going to do the interview and then some final thoughts. I'm going to try to take the best talking points of the interview that I possibly can. Just so, you know, we I can accommodate the short attention spans of my subscribers. Not all of y'all, but some of y'all. <laughs> and I can empathize as well. So uh, tell me what y'all think so far about just the background information. Just the background information in itself is rich enough, right? So like, comment, share, and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think so far. Stand by for part two. I'll see y'all in the next one. Thank you. And shout out again, Denise. All right. Love y'all. Bye. What is up, black people? How y'all doing? I want to let all you black women know you need to uh, get a white man in your life.